It's the first business day in the new year. Welcome to Business Incorporated and Happy New Year to you. I'm Chimeze Obi Iwago. On the show today, Nigeria's PMI rises strongly in December to 68.7. Sternoff gains as retailer plans to restate 2015 results. Plus, oil prices post their strongest opening to a year since 2014. Well, we'll start off the program here in Nigeria, where the monthly PMI report released by FBN Quest today shows that Nigeria's Manufacturing Purchasing Managers Index rose strongly to 68.7 in December from 60.1 in November. FBN Quest attributes the improvement to the CBN's use of multiple FX windows, which has transformed liquidity. The report notes that the weekly turnover on the investors and exporters FX window has risen to about $1 billion. But despite the strong readings in December, FBN Quest cautions that a similar surge the previous year was followed by a sharp fall in January 2017. And to the markets now is the first trading day in the new year for most global markets here on the African continent. The NSE index started off on the red zone, trading 1.46% low at intraday. Now, all the markets were upbeat. JSC index was up 0.06%, and Egypt was up 0.15%. Kenya closed the year 2017 up 0.92% on Friday. And Gulf stock markets were mostly high at intraday as most opened for the first time in 2018. Dubai's shaper Gulf Navigation fell sharply on news of a rights issue. The Dubai index edged up 1.22% as Gulf Navigation dropped 3.1%. The company's board raised issue and paid up capital by 448.3 million dirhams to 1 billion dirhams. All stocks in the blue chip Emma stable rose, with flagship Emma properties gaining 1.4%. Abu Dhabi's index was up 0.99%. Qatar's index was up 1.14%. Saudi Arabia, the only major regional market to trade on Monday, was down 0.08%. In Europe, markets were lower in early trade this first day of trading in the new year as investors reacted to surprisingly upbeat economic data in China and continued to monitor geopolitical unrest in Iran. Let's talk to Annette Wisbert, my colleague at the Frankfurt Stock Exchange. Good afternoon, Annette. A beautiful day, a beautiful year. Happy New Year to you. <laughs> And to you. Thank you. Now, independent report in today shows the UK manufacturing data slowed down in December, missing forecasts and putting London stocks on a back foot. Is the rest of Europe worried? Well, I would say that the rest of Europe is not necessarily worried, but um, I think investors are now uh, yeah, sort of slowly waking up to the fact that <clears throat> Brexit will have an effect on the UK economy, and that's now showing its first sort of imprints here, because the manufacturers are uh, cutting back on hiring, they're saying their future is uncertain, they're also holding back expanding capacities. These are all signs that uh, those people who are making investment decisions in the manufacturing sector in the UK, they are concerned about the future, they are uncertain about how their future will look like because for now we don't know how Brexit will look like. We don't know whether the trade deal will be favorable, whether it will be good for the UK or not. So I think that's just the beginning which we are starting to see here now, the fallout from Brexit for the UK economy. So tell me, what is the PMI outlook for the rest of Europe for the final month of 2017 and um, how would that impact investors' risk? reward sentiments and assets investing in the new year. 
Well, the Europe picture is completely different from the UK. Here we have uh, actually the best reading in two decades. So, and it also seems that Germany and France, like the two powerhouses of Europe, they're moving in tandem, which is a very good sign for the European economy. Um, we clearly also have effects on the markets already now. For example, the euro has been driven to a three-year high above 120 towards the US dollar that's of course not necessarily good for the European economy because of course for many companies that also means that their goods will be priced more expensively outside of Europe and that could then dampen growth but for now it seems everybody is super optimistic here in Europe about their growth outlook for uh, for the for this year I have to say because we're already in 2018 um, so that that kind of bodes well for the outlook also for equities because Clearly, equities are mirroring the, uh, or their valuation is mirroring uh, the, the, the earnings outlook also for uh, European companies. There's only one exception to that stellar picture, and that is Italy. We have seen a slow reduction in the PMI reading here, and Italy might be the problem child of 2018 in Europe, as we're also having new elections in Italy, with the risk of a populist party uh, rising there potentially to government. Right, the new year has just started, so you give us your first prediction for 2018. What will have performed in the new year? Bitcoin, oil, or equities? <laughs> well, that's the million dollar question, isn't it? Oh, yeah. uh, I can't really answer that, <laughs> which of those assets will outperform each other. I just can give you like an, an overview. I mean, Bitcoin has been very volatile and it, it also is coming under increased scrutiny from various regulators. So this is likely to continue also in 2018, which makes it not a very safe asset to invest your money in. Equities have seen a very good ride during 2007. Almost everywhere they are on record levels, but many people are still saying there's still room for equity valuations going up because there is no crisis and a lot of the equity movements are past dependent, meaning if the trend is going up, then uh, equities keep on rising. And of course, there is still a lot of cheap money around. The ECB has reduced its monetary policy stimulus, but still is on the paddle, so to say. So there's still room, at least according to many people here in the markets, that equity valuations could go up. Um, but of course, that's all depending on whether there will be a crisis or not. Talking about crises, we have to talk about oil. You were mentioning that asset as well. Oil has seen a ride as well last year. Remember in June or July, it was uh, down at a level of 47 US dollar per barrel, if you talk about Brent. Now it's above 60. So there has been a huge price uh, uh, appreciation already, but if you look at the longer time horizon, you also see that oil has been trading around one, one, uh, $100.15 a barrel just three years ago. And if you believe in the econo econ in the recovery story of the world economy, then there is still room to believe that oil could actually appreciate even further. Well, thank you very much, Annette. Um, the year has just started. We'll continue to track those markets, Bitcoin, equity, and of course, oil that has been trending yeah. higher. Won't thank you. Thank you for your time. Enjoy the rest of the day.